Hi, my name is Trina Feliciano. I'm Alina Feliciano's mom, and the following is a video that I put together with her to discuss how she is um, coping with her myotonic dystrophy, what she has experienced in the past relating to her disease process, and um, just how she looks at things from her perspective. There will also be a couple of clips that show some of her symptoms, some of the things that are related to myotonic dystrophy. Um, some quirky things that we haven't quite figured out, but I think that putting together something like this, um, the anecdotal histories of people with myotonic dystrophy, especially the juvenile onset type of myotonic dystrophy, um, is valuable. I felt it was valuable to me as her mom um, and an occupational therapist to understand what other people are going through, especially as I came upon videos and testimonies um, from people that were actually experiencing the disease. Um, it's also been helpful to be part of a support group now and to discuss the things that we experience with people in the support group as um, you find out that you're not alone and that um, some of the things you thought, you know, like, wow, where is this coming from? actually have an explanation within the disease process itself and how it affects um, each person with myotonic dystrophy differently, especially um, those that have had a juvenile onset of some kind. So um, yeah, I don't know exactly when Alina's disease process began. Um, she'll talk about how she was experiencing difficulty in school in the sixth grade um, she was in homeschool and also a one-room school before that, so we're not really sure whether she had like a lot of difficulties back then as she um, got a lot of support. But I do know that, you know, even in homeschool when I was um, working with her up until sit, um, the second grade, that she did have trouble with math. And so um, whether that's related to myotonic dystrophy, I don't know. But I hope you enjoy the video. We're going to um, cut and paste in a few places um, because my iPad kept um, shutting off. Apparently I had too many apps taking up too much memory. So um, excuse the edits, but I hope this is helpful to someone. God bless. All right, so Alina Feliciano, how old are you? I am 23 years old. And how long have you known that you have myotonic dystrophy? Only a couple months I found out in, in May and it is now September. Okay, did you kind of know before May? Um, it was like a strong like feeling that yeah, I probably did have, I probably do have it, but um, got the diagnosis in May. Okay, so. how did they confirm a diagnosis of myotonic dystrophy? Um, genetics testing. And what does that involve? They take blood and then they analyze it to see, like they look at the markers in the blood to see if you have. Okay. Know, yeah. So it's something about, um, like CTG repeats on the 19th chromosome. How many do you have? I have 293 repeats. Okay. And that puts you in the classical range for the um, disease. So, as we're thinking back. Um, we're kind of assuming that you have what kind of uh, type of a muscular dystrophy or myotonic dystrophy? Juvenile onset. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much starts around, well, when looking back, my symptoms started in like sixth grade. Okay, and what did, what did that include? Because I think a lot of the times people think about muscular dystrophies as being just muscle weakness. So myotonic dystrophy has something with juvenile onset that presents a little bit differently? Mine were more learning learning defi deficits. Like, um, math was really hard for me, and like forgetting to turn in my homework or somehow losing my homework even though I finished it the night before. Mm. And what did we assume your problem was at that time? That I just wasn't turning in my homework? No. We thought you had attention deficit disorder. Oh. Yeah. Turns out I do. And that's part of myotonic dystrophy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in high school, did it get any better? No. 
it kind of stayed the same. I failed my math courses, and I was better at turning in my work. Mm -hmm. But my grades weren't necessarily any better. Um, I needed glasses suddenly, because I couldn't see. So, yeah. Now, what about, um, like, how did you get through your math courses? Um, well, since I failed them, we talked to the vice principal, and he let me do them online. And I took Algebra 1 and 2 and Geometry online and passed those with A's and B's. Okay. And were you able to do that on your own? No, my mom had to do the math courses with me, so that was fun. Yeah, and math has always been a struggle for you, even when we were homeschooling you. Yeah. So Probably had dyscalculia. Probably have yeah. dyscalculia. Okay. And so we also learned something about how myotonic dystrophy affects the brain. What was a, um, an illustration of that that kind of makes sense to you? Well, apparently, um, with myotonic dystrophy, it never affects someone's brain the same way. So it's kind of like buckshot to the brain. So just like little places in your brain are just hit all over like buckshot. So you might have glitches in your thinking process. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Um, I know that sometimes you would do really, really well, like when you were doing your clinical and your schoolwork, and then other times you were doing, you know, poorly. And what did your clinical instructors kind of think of that? They would say that I'm turning it on and off. They're like, we can see that she can do it, but she's just, she chooses not to. And it's, it's, it was upsetting to me because, oh yeah, I want to be in this school longer than I have to be. I want to be in this program. For four years and a two-year degree. That makes sense. Good yeah. job. <laughs> so that that was really frustrating. I remember, you know, it's probably even hard to talk about right now, yeah? Yeah, I get sarcastic when I'm upset. Yeah. So um, I was wondering, like, you do have a myotonic symptom in um, your hands. Can you show what that looks like? I probably have to get closer. Okay, so go ahead and get closer. So, when I clench my hand, I can't open it. <laughs> I can, like, kind of open these two fingers, and I can try to force it open. But it stays like this until it relaxes. It does it with both hands, but I just don't feel like doing this hand. Okay. All right, and how long have you been doing that, able to do that? I remember it freshman year, but I didn't think it was weird. I just was like, ah, my hands do this. Oh, interesting. Okay. And, and I think it was a problem. Right, so when we were... Um, getting genetic testing, what were we initially looking for? Like, we didn't know you had any myotonic dystrophy. We didn't even know the name of it or anything like that. So, what um, were we looking for? Just other things, right? Like, yeah, we thought you might have a syndrome. Yeah, syndromes. Because my mom was always talking about my fingers and the length of them being syndromy. Yeah, like she has a much shorter ring finger. Yeah, and um, she's also hypermobile in the joints, so go ahead and show that. So. And that's all of her fingers. And I think your toes are somewhat hypermobile, yeah, too. Yeah. Hypermobile. And she has a large, big toe. So there were there were some things. I don't know why well, that's... Well, that's part of a syndrome characteristic. Yeah, I don't for some. feel like that. This <laughs> well, actually, her um, uncle has that, so we're not too worried about that. Don't worry, she's not going to take off her shoe. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, so um, basically we were looking for a syndrome and then she went in and saw the geneticist and the geneticist looked at all her characteristics and thought that she might have some form of a dysplasia because of her height. How, how tall are you? I'm 4'11". Okay. So there was that and you know she has some other things that haven't been explained and we we will be getting back further genetic testing later on, but um, when we went out to the car, um, I got a phone call from your dad's cousin. And do you remember how that conversation went? Not very well. Like, I know she was like, I think she has this. You should check into this. Mm -hmm. This being myotonic dystrophy. And why did she think you might have it? Because apparently a lot of people in our family have it. My dad most likely has it. No, he does have it. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, in order for, him, no, in order oh, for yeah. him to give it to you, he has to have it. So, thanks, Dad. <laughs> so, 
So, um, yeah, but he hasn't been tested. And what are, what are the only symptoms that he really has? We're not sure about the baldness because his dad's bald too, but it might be part of it. Um, he had the early cataracts. He's only 51? 52 right now. He's not 52, is he? He's born 60. No, he'll be 52 this year. He's 51. And he got cataract surgery last year. And, and that's a sign of myotonic dystrophy. He also has very small hands. I don't know if that's something. He has small hands for a guy. Yeah, that may be related to something else, though. Great. So. <laughs> so we're still looking into, you know, whether there's anything else that we need to be concerned about. Yeah, but there's nothing really major with him. No, and that's that's very common for the mild onset of the disease. like, case of it. Right, and what is that called? Do you remember? Anticipation. Yeah, so... When so if I had kids, they'd get it even worse than me. Right. <laughs> And what does that mean? That I'm not going to have kids. Right. And how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's upsetting, but I mean, there's other options. What are you considering? Like adoption. Mm -hmm. So, are you married yet? No. No. Okay. But well, you, have, you have plans to do that? Yeah. Well, wait, plans to get married or plans to Plans adopt? to get married. Yes. Yeah. I don't set in stone, but it's a plan. Okay, so, um, what else did I need to ask you? I don't know. Um, we talked about the myotonic symptoms. Oh, yeah, the geneticist, um, when we told her um, that it ran in the family on your dad's side and about his cataracts and everything, she went ahead and, and said, okay, we need to look for the myotonic dystrophy. Yeah. And then what was the clincher for her that made her think that 99% oh, you yeah. had it? Right, so I, Alina told me one day after we had gone to see the geneticist, probably within that first week after the visit, she says, oh, you know, when I close my hand all the way, I can't open it, Mom. <laughs> I didn't know it was a problem. I was just like, eh, I've been able to do this. And I'm all like, that's significant. So I went ahead and um, called the geneticist, and within a day she called me back and said, okay, I think we're, we're looking at myotonic dystrophy at this point. So the initial feeling of getting the diagnosis and finding out more about it was what? It wasn't like that shocking because I had already come to think that um, I had it. So it wasn't like, oh, what, really? I got, I have this? It was kind of like, well, now it's real. Fun. Well, I mean, the initial of when the geneticist was saying that um, you might have it. Like, remember, we, we were looking into it, and we don't didn't know for sure, but we were pretty sure. It was kind of like a, a feeling of relief, right? Oh, well, yeah, because when it's like, oh, there's a reason that I've been horrible at everything. Yeah, and having a reason or having, like, you know, that I wasn't just trying to do these things because, you know, how, how had I, as your mom, um, responded to you failing? You at? thought I wasn't trying or that I didn't care. And did I blame you? Well, yeah, you were kind of mad at the school, but you were like, most of the blame is on you because you're not doing this. Right. That so, was annoying, too. Yeah, and, and even for, like, parents, I think it's important to understand that when you don't know what's going on with your, your child, um, it can look like, especially with myotonic dystrophy, it can look like a behavior thing. Why? I look apathetic. It's one of the things, and also, like, I genuinely don't look like I care as much as other people. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, it cut out. <laughs> and the dog's butt is in the picture. There you we go. You can put him in the picture. You want to say hello to the dog? Here we go. This is our rescue dog. You want to tell about him a little bit? His name is Richie. And my mom found him on the side of the road when she was walking in the morning. And he looked like just rags. And my mom thought something had hit him and that he was dead. But then she saw his side moving up and down. So she picked him up, brought him home. And we cut off all his mats of fur and gave him a bath. And that was about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And now he's wagging his tail, gives us kisses, you know, Super normal happy. dog stuff. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay, so we were talking about that it was a relief to know yeah. um, the reason why you had different things um, happen. And um, so you had, what caused us to start looking into this was what? in the first place, like why did we start looking into something oh, being wrong? I failed my second field work and failing two field works means that you are kicked out of the program, you don't get any money back, you, you're you done. You what don't program finish your was degree. This? Occupational therapy assistance. Okay, so um, you were done with all the coursework, yeah. was that easy to get through? No, that was really hard to get through, but once again, I had my mom, who's an OT, so that helped. But I got through all the field works with good passing grades, or not field works, coursework, which was two years of coursework. That was fun. And then I have two eight-week field works, and I failed one in 2013, 2012, 2012. Um, yeah, I think that's right. I don't remember um, the exact. I don't remember. Maybe it was 2013. No, it wasn't. Because no, it was I 2012, had, yeah. and then you had seven months. Seven months of remediation, which included a 20-something page paper of answering questions having to do with elderly people and taking care of them, because apparently I was a safety risk. Um, so that was fun. And then I thought I just had to do the paper, but no, I had to do the paper, and then I had to remember exactly what I wrote and tell her what I wrote for the answers. And? They didn't tell me that. And I had to demonstrate things, too, like transfers and other stuff. So it was supposed to take, we were told it would take how long? Uh, six weeks. Six weeks to three months and to it, seven months. And it, it took, took me seven months. Right. So you had a lot of difficulty being able to get through Well, that. and plus they only met with me once a week for one hour. Okay. That's all the time they could give me. And they expected what? They expected you to be doing what at home? They expected me to be like... Learning it learning and then it. being tested when you came I out. didn't know that. They yeah. told me I needed to do the paper, like answer all the questions. So I was done with that within like a week and a half. I was all right. done. But you did know it later on though. Yeah. Yeah. But I was trying. I was going over it and reading it and trying to get it in my head. It's not like I was not reading it. Right, so some days you'd do really good, and other days you wouldn't. Once and again, she turns it on and off. Yeah, got some bitterness there. Still don't. <laughs> no way. Okay, so you found out about that you failed your field work, and how did you feel about that? You know, devastated. After your second time, you can't go back. You can't, you don't get any money back, nothing, you're just done, you don't have to get a degree. Totally done. Yeah, so, I know this, this is a little too, there we go. Okay, so, you got in your car. Yes. And what happened? Well, you know, crying and I didn't want to like, just, I wanted something to take my mind off, so I turned on the radio. And it was on Caleb. Christian radio station, and it was playing the song Overcomer by this girl named Mandisa, and I, I like Mandisa, I've, I had, we had some of her CDs, but I hadn't heard this song before, and I didn't know who it was, so it was called Overcomer, and it was like, you're an overcomer, stay in the fight till the final round, and I was just like, okay, so this isn't the end, I'll, I'll think of something, something, like, I'll be able to do something, like, I wasn't sure, I didn't know what it would be, and I had no clue, but I was like, okay, I can just, I can overcome this. I'm not going to just be useless. I'm not going to just have nothing to give my life purpose or anything. I mean, I have a family that loves me, and I have a boyfriend that loves me. Like, I'm not just a failure. I just need to find something else to do. And you have... And I have God, obviously. Um... So I drove home, and my mom was like, we were talking, and I was still crying, and just really, even with that song, just feeling just really down, and just feeling like, why did this happen again? But you hadn't told me anything about the song. No, because my mom doesn't like me listening to the radio when I drive, so didn't want to add that to my list of transgressions. 
Yeah, and why don't I want you listening to the radio? I can listen to the radio when I drive. I'm an okay driver, as long as I'm not on the highway. Tell them how long you've been driving. I've been driving for a long time, but got my license recently. (laughs) The rule is that we don't allow radio listening to until you've been driving for a year. What? That that was never told to me. And it's been a year. It it was told to her. It has been a year. Because I got my license in September. Yeah, okay, whatever. Ah! You still have to have a year. (laughs) It's been a year! (laughs) Anyways, matter it not, about a week later, I found a CD by Mandisa that I had lost for months and couldn't find, and I had put it in and was listening to it, and you walked in. Yeah. So I was in the living room, she was in her room over here, and I heard the song, and I was like, wait a second, I've heard this song before. So I walked in, and she's like... My mom's like, have you, did you hear what they were saying? I was like, well, yeah, but, like, I heard this song, like, when I was in the car, like, when I failed, this is the song I was playing. And she didn't say anything about, like, the fact that I was listening to the radio. But she's like, we're, like, crying and everything, and like, whoa, this song. So my mom, for Valentine's Day, which was kind of, like, really close, she downloaded the song for me so I could sing it. So I've sung it at church a couple times. You want to sing it right now? No. It should go on the video then. Mom, I have not even practiced singing the song. Okay, well, we'll splice it in later. Or you can look for it. On YouTube. You can look for it? No, I'm saying the people. Oh, yeah. Just put it on YouTube. (laughs) I actually don't know where the CD is right now. I think it's in my room, but that's like. All right, but she's a great singer. She's got a few songs on YouTube. Yeah. So, um, God has been encouraging us. Is there anything else that God has given you that has been an encouragement? Oh, well, okay. So there's this place called Pillar Child Development. Mm -hmm. We've been looking for a clinical for me because since I have a disability, the school can't really be like, you're out because that would be discrimination. So we've been looking for a a placement for me, but it's really hard since I have accommodations to help me with my myotonic dystrophy and stuff. Finding a place that wants to deal with my accommodations and with someone who's, I don't know, uh, has a disability, I guess, is kind of difficult. But this place, Pillar Child Development, which is kind of close, said they would be willing to consider me. Turns out they can't take me on this fall, so this year at all, because, um their student to supervisor ratio they already have too many students they don't have enough people to supervise me so that was a bummer but at the same time it's like well at least someplace was considering me that gives me hope that like it's not like no one will consider me I mean this place did so even though they aren't able to take me now maybe they could take me later so it's it's hope it gives me a little bit of hope. It doesn't feel so like hopeless. Now, have you been a part of um, any kind of support groups? I went to one support group. I got a nifty little cure myotonic dystrophy rubber bracelet. You want to show them what it looks like? We're also gonna get her a um, medic alert band. Has the little www.myotonic.org And she's got a card. I got a card too, yeah. From the association. So, that tells me, oh, she might have balance issues, swallowing difficulty, abnormal heart rhythm. Also lists medications that are dangerous. Yeah. Like anesthetics. So you have to be careful about, you know, quite a few things. With myotonic dystrophy, um... What are some of the other issues that, um, besides muscle weakness, or, you know, explain a little bit about what you know about the disease. Oh, okay. So, with me, I don't really lose muscle up here. I'm losing it, like, in my wrists and my ankles, so distally, so the joints that are further away from my body. How how's your hand strength? My hand strength isn't good. I mean, to be fair, there are no muscles in your fingers, 
So even if there were, I can't build up muscle in my lower joints. So I have to be careful with that. So for instance, using a gait belt to help pick up people to transfer them to wheelchair, I can't do that since my hands cramp up. So that would be dangerous because then I couldn't let go of them and then we could both go down. So that would be the safety risk. Uh, what? You have some muscles in your hand though. Yeah, but not in your fingers. It's not my hand that cramps up, it's my fingers. Right. And what, how are your feet and ankles? My ankles are really weak. I've sprained both of them. I think I sprained this one twice. So my left one twice and my right one once, I think. I might have sprained them both twice, I don't remember. But yeah, I've sprained them walking on flat ground. Yeah. One time I was just leaping through the house, so that was my own fault. But, you know, I was walking on concrete and I sprained my ankle. I mean, how does that happen? It makes no sense. Um, sprained my hands some, my and fingers. And you went to the myotonic... Uh, not myotonic. You went to the Muscular Dystrophy Association clinic, the MD clinic. I did. Mm -hmm. Which one? And you saw a bunch of different people, including a new neurologist and a oh yeah, respiratory. Therapist. Yeah, there were there were a bunch of people asking me questions, analyzing me, watching me walk. That was the physical therapist, and um, so you saw an occupational therapist, yeah, um, a social worker. Uh, the respiratory therapist, what did he say? He said that um, my diaphragm is really weak, so my lungs are overstretching to try and compensate for the weakness of my diaphragm, which isn't good because, you know, some, I don't, I'm not saying my lungs are going to pop, but like with a balloon, you just need to maintain that elasticity to yeah. function well. And so what were we looking at as uh, an option to help? What is it called? CPAP? A uh, BiPAP. BiPAP. But they rejected but, it. Oh, did a sleep study, and they're like, oh, she has no problems when she's sleeping. Which we knew. We knew I didn't have any problems, but we're wanting to make it easier for me to breathe. Sleep. Granted, mm -hmm. I don't like a nasal cannula up my nose while I'm sleeping. It's not fun. It's very annoying. And, like, I don't know. How, how do you sleep? Like, I sleep pretty well, like pretty deep. Uh huh. And one of the things with myotonic dystrophy is, I'm not right <laughs> now. I am. I like, need to sleep, sleep more, right? All the time, like ten to twelve hours, and I'm good. But I do. My body is now waking up at like seven, so I try to take a nap during the day. Don't always do that. Like yesterday, I had taken my shower or bath, whatever. And I went into my room just to like rest, waiting for worship, and I fell asleep. And then they woke me up. I had worship, so about 30 minutes awake. Went back to sleep, slid an alarm on my phone so I could talk to my boyfriend when he got out of class at 9, 30, 10. He called me, and I was just like, you know what? I'm going to go back to sleep. So I went to bed at like around 8, technically. And you got up at 7. I got up at 7. So, so I'm pretty good. That's 11 hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good right now. Like, I'm still tired, you know, I can always sleep some more. But, I'm good. Like, I'm not gonna pass out. Yeah. I'm tired though, so, just let you know. Right, and when you were younger, how did that affect you? Like, your need to oh, sleep all the dude. time? <laughs> Anytime when I was, like, allowed to stay up, like Christmas, psh, wanted to stay up, I was out, like, by 8 or 9. What about weddings? Weddings. <laughs> You had to take the photos pretty early or else I'd be crying saying I wanted to sleep because honestly, I wanted to sleep. My cousin annoyed with me at sleepovers because I'd fall asleep. You always fall asleep too early. We're supposed to be talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean to. Can't help it. Yeah. Now I'm a little better. I can kind of force myself to stay awake and she usually falls asleep before me. So. What about your immune system? It, it oh, does something yeah. to when the immune When I get system. sick. You know how most people, they get a cold, they're like out for like two days, one or two days, and then they're just like, oh, pushing through it. I'm sick for about a week. With a fever or a stomach flu, it's even worse. Stomach flu is kind of just, it just passes whenever. You typically but. have fevers with your colds, though. Yeah. I don't get colds. I get fevers. Yeah. I don't. Like, it's never just a cold. It's fever. Runny nose, coughing, 
sometimes accompanied by throwing up. It's not, it's not pretty. No. Or fun. Right. So, I don't enjoy being sick. It floors you. Yeah, it, yeah. Like, some people, they're like, got a nice relaxing day off of work while I'm sick, and the next day they're back at work. Me, I'm just like, ugh, horrible. Like, just like, drained of all energy, can't do anything, hurts to even get up. Now, one of the things that it's, um, that we've read about, too, is how it affects you socially. Like, you know, your um, personal social skills. What do you think it's, how has it affected you? I don't that? have the best social skills. Like, my cousin, example. Um, I walk, and my mom, we were at a park and we were walking, I just walk ahead of them. Like, I'm not really thinking, oh, I want to get away from them, or I don't want to be around them. I'm walking. But, it is perceived as she's being rude and doesn't want to walk with us. It's not that. It's just that I am not aware that it's perceived that way. I'm just walking at my own pace. It may be faster, or it may be slower than yours, and I feel that people should accept that. But, it is viewed as that's really rude, and that's really inconsiderate. Like, we want to spend time with you, and you're just, like, off on your own. So, some people might think you're kind of aloof, or... Oh, yeah, they think... Some people have thought I'm conceited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm shy, so that also aids the conceited thing. I'm shy, and also I look like I'm bored. And you have what kind of a tone in your voice a lot of the time? Which <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> well, I always talk like this. And, uh, I guess it kind of sounds like you're an idiot all the time. So that might be, is that what you're That's off-putting. And it, it, not like you're an idiot, but it's kind of a sarcastic tone. I can't help it. And you don't always sound that way. I, I just, yeah, I can sound very, yeah. very kind. But I can also sound like, why are you speaking? Mm-hmm. Nothing you say has any consequence. Please stop. Right, but do you mean that? Sometimes. Some people are not very smart in the way they say things. And it's just annoying to me. Granted, I have those times too, but, you know, it annoys me. How many doctors do you have now? Seven? Eight. Eight. Can you name them? (laughs) Well, I mean, name those. I'm sure you couldn't name their names. Okay, I'm like, I know, like, <laughs> one of them. Um, I have a neurologist, cardiologist, endocrinologist. How many neurologists? Two. Oh, yeah, I count them both. Two neurologists. Um, a psychiat- psychologist? Psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Uh, geneticist. Geneticist. Well, I don't really count her anymore because we don't see her. You still have to see her when the other results get back. <gasps> okay, um, I really <coughs> don't know. Your family doctor? Family doctor. <coughs> so, um, That's seven. endocrinologist. I already said endocrinologist. And you said the cardiologist? Yeah. And I know there's one more. We'll have to think seven. I think there's eight. I think there's seven. No, there is eight. I can't remember what the other one is. It's seven. It's eight. <laughs> well, let's let's keep going. I'll I'll think of who the eighth one is. She's gonna randomly say it while we're talking about something else when she remembers. I am not. Anyhow, um, what else? So, um, actually, God has done another thing to encourage you through. A person. A person. Yeah, we sent out a, a video to all my relatives to um, let them know a little bit more of what Alina goes on, or what goes on with Alina, oh, neurologically. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom's aunt, great aunt or aunt? Aunt. Aunt. My great aunt, Myrna. She sent me $100, which she was like, just spend this on something you want and everything. And I was like, wow, that's awesome so nice of her which it was like she didn't have to do that I barely I've seen her like twice but that was just really sweet like someone who didn't have to do that someone who's not super close to me like personally like 
my cousins or aunts, just out of the greatness of her heart, just was like, I'm going to do something to encourage her. I'm going to do something nice for her. And I was like, great. Like, I love that. So yeah, I sent her. And then she lit, later sent me. Yeah, she sent my mom money too. I was like, whoa. $200. And it was Feel like, the love. You know, to pay for gas, you know, all the appointments and stuff. So it was really. Yeah, she's like, all awesome. Such an encouragement. Yeah. So, I mean, that was nice. I sent her a thank you card, of course. And. Who else does some thank you card? Oh, like, someone sent me a day planner. Sent her a thank you card, too. Like, people Which have been... really nice. Yeah. People have been great. Like... You know, your, your other aunts will... Call. Call and check up on well, you and everything. One of them calls. <laughs> yeah, but Trish has been involved in She doesn't call life. me, though. She doesn't? No. Oh, okay. She writes to you, though. Trish is more of a writer. She writes a lot. My phone's ringing. All right, we'll pause. Get back. Okay, so who was right about the doctors? <laughs> Let me say this. She would have blurted it out if we were still recording. No, I couldn't have because I can't think if I'm not quiet. So while we're in conversation. Oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> she can't think while she's quiet. Unless it's quiet. Okay. Well, I can think anyways, about the conversation. I should anyways. <laughs> Um, neuropsychologist. Probably the reason I didn't remember because it's a mixture of two different doctors. Probably. Well, no, it's not. It's one yeah, specialty. Well, no, the words. Okay. Neurologist. How was how was your neuropsychology um, evaluation? That was the test, right? Yeah. That was horrible. The, you know those standardized tests you take when you're like in high school and elementary where you fill in those little bubbles? There were 567 of those little bubbles asking me, do you feel people are watching you? And stuff like that. That was a lot. And then, 237, I think, of, like, circling yes or no, like, very likely, very unlikely. And then, like, in the middle of those, and then no feeling at all. But there was some good news, right? Yeah, I have an above average IQ of 111. So yeah. that's, that's nice. But well, then, it's like, within the average range still, I think. Mm -mm. Is above average? Average is 180 to 100. 80 to 100, but I think it's it's a range. Whatever. But I have an average IQ, so I'm not an idiot. So that's nice. Um, yeah. But what was, what was the yeah, concern? Yeah, I don't remember. The concern was that your memory um, and how you answered things was um, not consistent. Oh. Yeah, and also I have unusual thought processes. Right, but they never explained what that was. Yeah, they didn't say what was unusual. They just were like, oh, you have unusual thought processes. What do you mean? I don't understand. Yeah, so, and we know that you have an unusual way of looking at things. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, she's, she's perfect. Anyway. I'm not perfect. Okay, she's not perfect. But I don't know what you mean by unusual ways of thinking of things. Well, um, I don't, I don't remember why they were saying some of that. Like, I think that you were thinking that, um, people were watching you. You may have answered that they were because I, you okay. were just out of a clinical situation where people were watching you. So I think that that's, that's what I meant. I didn't mean, oh, like random people are watching me, like spying on me. No, people are observing me. Right. Kind of means watching, right? What is annoying? Like, unusual thought process. That's the only question I could think where they got that from. Okay. So, anyways, um, they did discover something of significance. What was that? I don't remember. What did they discover? Some mood issues. It's clinically significant. Oh. Um, I have severe depression and stress and extremely severe anxiety. Well, According to my phone, I do have a lot of stress. Right. The the answers you gave now were from the test that I gave you, but oh. they said that she has clinically significant levels of um, depression and anxiety, and that was probably... Clinically the, means I should probably be taking medication? Is that what it means by no, clinically it means, significant? Mm -mm. It means that you needed to get counseling. <sighs> and then possible medication. I have a counselor, needed. by the way. She's nice. I like her, but don't necessarily like talking. 
I'm not a big talker. Oh dear. Yeah. So anyways, um, they're going to go out to Chipotle, I guess, next Tuesday. Men of is going out to eat oh, in this to, area. Okay. Hi, baby. We like Chipotle, though. Food. <laughs> and food, just in general. Yeah, we like food. We do. Um, so what are your strengths? What do you think you're really good at? Singing, cooking, reading. I don't know if that counts as a skill. I'm good at reading out loud, like inflections and stuff. Are you good with people at all? I'm good with old people and little people. Like, not midgets, but like young people. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily greatest with like people my age. But I'm good with everyone else. Now, did we talk about the support group at all? I know we mentioned it. We mentioned it. Yeah. So what did you think of the people? I didn't really, like, involve myself. I more listened. My mom involved herself. They seem nice. I like them. Mm -hmm. Did um, you find a lot in common with them? <laughs> yeah. S scary. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have some worries about how the myotonic dystrophy will progress and everything. What what are your worries? Well, one of the things is like your facial muscles. My mouth will sometimes just like, the muscles right here will just frown. And I'll be like that. Like the rest of my face will be like this and then my mouth will be like this. So one of the things is your facial muscles will start drooping. Like one of my relatives has had like how many surgeries on her eyelids? I didn't know. Yes you did, you're the one who told me. Titi Layla? Layla? Who's Layla? I don't know. Anyway, she told me she doesn't remember but her eyelids started drooping so she had to get cert like a eyelid lift or something to get them up so she well, can I actually have see. Told you, cause I don't remember. You did tell me. No, I didn't. You did. I told you about the pacemakers. There was like, okay, one of them got seven pacemakers. I don't know about the number. Seven. You must be talking to dad, because I don't know any specifics. And actually, we knew about the muscle disease in his side of the family, but it was only affecting men. She thought it was only men. So I never thought it would affect, um, you know, Alina. And yeah, I didn't I think her dad had anything. And what else? Um, his mom, my husband's mom, is the one that passed it on. So we know that most likely Alina's uncle, Jose, has it. He and has, like, the facial features, like, very gaunt. Like, And he's having it. some difficulty with swallowing. swallowing. See, that's bad, too, because I love food. Yeah, so a lot of the times, myotonic dystrophy, patients that have trouble with swallowing go on what kind of a diet? Mm, pureed. Like, I tried pureeing stuff when I got my wisdom teeth taken out. It was disgusting. Yeah. Like, you know when you eat stuff, and it tastes good together, but apparently pureeing it makes it disgusting. It's true. It's weird. Yeah. You mix them all together when you're eating. Yeah, something about that. It's not very good. Um, disgusting. Slimy. So, you, and also, like, okay, so it's the, the facial muscles. You're nervous about that. How that can affect... Also, I don't like being weak. Like, right. in general, like, these muscles, I'm strong here. And I'm strong in my legs. <sighs> I can lose these muscles, and I don't really want to do that. And so I work out a little bit every day. Lift some weights. What about the heart thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Your heart's a muscle. I have a d muscle wasting disease. So just kind of work that out for yourself. I can yeah. have abnormal heart rhythms. Right, that's primarily what it does with the heart is just affect yeah. your rhythm somehow. But this one affects all your muscles. So, muscles on the outside and on the inside. Right. But it's it varies between everybody. Like, yeah, so, I mean, luckily, maybe I won't have any swallowing problems or facial problems. or. And heart. you might be able to walk and, you yeah. know. Yeah, one of my arms has to, like, <laughs> She actually can still walk. She just didn't need help with um, I thought she... on the stairs. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dad. <clears throat> Hi, Dad's home. Okay. So, are we done? We are going to be done for now. Okay. I think that's it. All right. Say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>
Okay, should we do the t-shirt? Okay? You come closer. All right, thank you. You do? The big ginormous one? Are you twitchy? <laughs> Does the other hand do it? No. It's usually this hand. This is the hand you said is weaker too, right? Ah, you moved it out of the way. Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to say. It's like it has its own little life. <laughs> okay. No. No. Just relax. We're gonna determine whether she has myotonic dystrophy. We already know I do. <laughs> that would have been a, a cheaper this price. Is <laughs> <laughs> here, put your tongue here. Okay. You got your tongue. <laughs> She's a baby. Here. Oh my lad. Ali. <laughs> okay. Relax. <laughs> Look at that. Did you see it? Did it, did it stay yeah. like that? It does a funny thing. Do it again. Watch Alina's tongue. Yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> see? It was more just... Oops. Sorry. Try again. No, no, no. You can't do it to your... Oh, you did do it to yourself. Ah. It's still doing... <laughs> I'm getting used to it. She's licking your foot the whole time. <laughs>